configuration of certain bodies being in certain location for the first time. You have to look how long it takes to get there to be the first time. And yeah. those that are going to pay the price of being exposed to it for the first time, how long it took them to form themselves into a, a body of people to be the recipient of the exposure of that configuration for the first time. Pluto doesn't go fast in X amount of years. Right, so a hundred years. And the nation, to form as a nation for a group of disgruntled individuals, takes many years to come together to be the first recipient or the second recipient of a planetary configuration. Well, compared to European nations, we were new. We were only up birthday in 1776, so we were a very new nation. Where did Pluto fall in their position? Um, goes back to the Dark Ages. Oh, I see. It goes back to the Dark Ages. And so we put all kind of labels on the functions and try to project it as a future behavior. Um, we therefore are a victim of our own body. Well, I think the agents have always been there for thousands of years. So we, we pray, we pray, we we pray upon the minds yeah, of individuals who want to suffer the calamity of their own fears by projecting it out in X amount of years to different locations in order to experience the fear. Well, it doesn't matter if we, we try to project it or not. We're going to play out the script anyhow. It's just some people are trying to read the script before we get to that uh, scene in the play, right? And some people will change the script. That's what can they? Can they? Yes. You see, this will is the director will allow you to. This yeah, is what we don't realize. Let it you see, we don't script. realize this. Think about it. The, yes, you don't the director will let you. If you yeah, don't realize this, this. Yeah. 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 see if you realize yeah. this. The script is only 99%. Because the owner can supersede the... The script Kenny. is only 99% valid. And will adhere to the 99% validity for the sake of the consistency of the human mind to adhere to consistency to survive. But the 1% of the random surprise to scrap the game at the projector's own appreciation or disappointment is reserved. And he who is strong enough to wrench the, the dice out of the hand of the decision of fate changes the whole game. But you gotta have the strength enough to say, I am God. And grab the dice from the hand of fate and turn the game around. Fate. Or you may have to lose it out and see the hand of fate playing out the sequential repetition of self-destruction. Is faith the creative force? Yeah, sure. Then how can the creative force be inconsistent? I mean, can the creative force be inconsistent? According to Heisenberg, it can. Yes, he can be inconsistent because he plays 99% consistency and 1% inconsistency to surprise himself that he has the capacity to fail on <laughs> command performance. <laughs> you haven't can do that. He's not able to fail on command performance. Excuse me, you having solar too tomorrow? Huh? Are you having solar too tomorrow? Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Okay, see you tomorrow. What, about 11? Yeah. Nine. If he can't Nine. fail on command performance, he's not capable of winning on command performance. He'll have to win on sequential all the time. But isn't that a duality and he is beyond all the time? Did he say, come let me make a universe, or did he, come, did he say, come let us make a universe? 
is it us plural or me a single or me a plural and us a single well isn't it a collective noun rather than being a plural or, or a single it's a collective noun collective noun is already pluralistic and not singular But is it a synergy? All the parts make up the one. So you can speak of it as one, even though it's a collection. No object ever manifested has a single potential. It has a dualistic potential within a polaristic movement. You can't have something manifesting that is not already preceding it in the same behavior. What is visible is already occurring at the invisible in equal relationship. Otherwise, it's not valid. You can't be a sperm alone, or an ovum alone, or two ovums, or two sperm, try as you like. And you wouldn't be sitting there talking to me if you were two sperms or two ovums, or one sperm. But I could be if I was in that 1%. Of right. what? Whatever that 1% no, is. That 1% is to... They can not two sperms either, or two of them. But can't that one percent defy the laws of nature? The one percent is defining the law in terms of willing to change the, the existing conditions around it, not the form in which it is. That's the challenge. He's not changing the form in which he's in. He's changing the existing conditions that he has to face. That's the whole purpose. I can gravel fate by the hand and take away the dice to change the conditions around me, but I can't change me from a sperm and an ovum to make myself two ovums or two sperms. But I can change my conditions. So what you're saying, there's certain things that are fixed, like the 144, that's fixed, you can't change that. Yeah. It's fixed. But you can change the time. Direct. The time of the cause and effect, the circumstance. And so therefore you can control a lot by that. And that's what Satmat is. Kal is time, and Sat is consciousness. So the part of the realized man is one of conscious exhortation by verbalization over the time relationship by anxiety. You're always master of the time by what you say. And you're always a victim to time by what you don't say. The universe is a sonic process geared down to geometry to exhibit time. So time takes precedent over geometry and sonics take precedent over time. But be it sonic and be it geometry, it's not valid if you don't have optics to examine it. And since sonics can't be observed, geometry can be observed. Sonics can only be heard and given a geometry to match the sonic to have some kind of representation of its behavior. And that will fulfill the momentum of time. So time is then, again, under the control of the sonic. The geometry would have to make a rhythmic measurement for the optics to relate to it. Does so your timing improve? Does your sonics improve? Yes. Hmm. If you say that you're going out to eat and you don't go, the timing is going to be off after a while. If you say you're going to go to the bathroom and then you don't go, the timing is going to be off after a while. Because you're not going when you say you're supposed to be going and therefore you're inhibiting what? The flow of what is supposed to move on time from moving on time by failing to perform on time. Mm -hmm. So. The mechanism can't trust what you say anymore and will go rampant or random 
or reach the state where it becomes unreliable. It's interesting, that shows the fallacy of psychedelic drugs which tend to convert sonics through synesthesia into optical effects and even the, and the optical effects into further geometric or the geometry and further optics too, taking you the wrong direction, essentially. By virtue of that, when they made the picture altered state, you saw the, the folly of chemistry trying to establish precedent over time. And then the man had to decide within his own frame of reference which was more important, the chemical illusion or the time-lapse control by sonics. So he induced pain to re-establish his identity. Otherwise he would be fading back into electromagnetic geometry. And the last point he chose what? Pain. Love. Good. I did the same thing when I fell off a building years ago and hit the ground. I was falling 30 feet, weighing 180 pounds. And if you know your mathematics, weight times the velocity of speed of acceleration which is 32 feet per second per second. You travel in doggone fast. Per second per second. <laughs> and if your brain can give you information how to regulate your fall it's faster than optics because the brain is already telling me when I slipped off the balcony I'm going to hit the concrete so do something and I'm falling backwards so all I did falling from that short distance at that particular weight at that velocity I did like that with my foot veered off of the building landed on the ground and when I went back there years after when I came out of the hospital and the police had already made a cast on this one I was exactly six inches from the concrete embedded in the ground and every bone was broken twice but it didn't feel like anything that I felt the instantaneous numbness known as analgesic anesthesia induced by carbon dioxide as self-refrigeration was so fantastically fast, who in the hell know what pain is? No. When, when the body starts to phase out in the hospital, when I was coming back to normality, then the pain began to be obvious. And I had to fight with the pain to survive or give it to the pain and die. Did the carbon dioxide build up so fast due to the, um, your reaction to the situation? My friend, how fast does carbon dioxide work in the, the container to make it capable of being an explosive? How fast does carbon dioxide work? Can you use carbon dioxide to be an explosive? Can I use it to be an explosive? I can use it to put out fire. But at the same time, can you use it to be an explosive? I have an idea. The answer is yes, but I don't know. I, I don't understand the, the physics. See, all the knowledge of atomic physics and everything. <laughs> oh, I do. It's the atom bomb. Super cold. Because you are. We are learning anything new, man. What you once called frigidity implosion, the way a mushroom grows. Yeah. We are learning anything new. We just put it into mechanical machinery and firing it off to validate certain physics. That's 
why I said the greatest surprise to both nations with their weaponry is sonics to knock out the electromagnetic connectedness of the computer. <coughs> At the time of the release of the bomb by the state, <coughs> that's when they can dispose of it. You can't impose it, because then you are taking sides of the land. Lazarus, come forth. He didn't do it until he was asked. And Lazarus could not refuse to come out. So, regardless we like it or not, we are the custodians of a fantastic science. Because he lived what he said, which is, which is actually in television they really portrayed something wrong. Then because in a statement of later, I believe when, I believe it was Peter, and Thomas they portrayed, when they apparently they gave a name of a woman. I'm assuming this is in the Bible, and they raised her from the dead, and doubting Thomas. And this is they portrayed this. Peter said, "Well, we can't do anything now. She's dead," and Thomas said, "No. Remember what." Christ said. So then he said the words, and I forget what the words were now, but they were said in the, and you know, remember? And then anyway, anyway, suddenly the lady opens her eyes and looks around, and then, and then Peter, actually as portrayed in this, jumps back like he can't believe what he's seeing. But Thomas, the doubter, is portrayed as, yeah, see, I told you so. So that's the way they portrayed it on television anyway. But I, I don't even remember seeing that in the Bible. They just parroted his words. Yeah, yeah and but with a just like, well, let's let's just try the words and do it do it like he says. But I don't know. <laughs> That's how they portrayed it. What they're trying to tell you, it is that simple. If you act it. In other words, they went through it anyway, even though. They went through the actions. Yeah. You will not know if a thing is valid until you act it. Right, like press you told to press a button that does something, the only way you find out is if you press the button. Mm -hmm. And you know right then. So if you don't act it you don't know and so the all of the truth is to act it, regardless of how you may feel incompetent and uncertain untrained in the knowledge of it, go through it and discover your competency by repetition and your incompetency by your first exposure to it. If you knew to do everything accurate the very first time when you do it, You'd have to do it to see if it was accurate. Good, then it's you know, this is... <laughs> you, don't, you don't even know, even if you think it. This is a, a problem that I've had, being being approaching things from an intellectual level at, for most of my life, is, and conceiving of myself, perhaps incorrectly, in fact incorrectly, as a finite existence, the buttons that I'm told to push for doing these various things, I'm supposed to hold them for lengths of time, such as 10 years or five years. Usually in the most metaphysical past, you're given five years for a thing. To try the, them all out and see what they do, obviously in one lifetime you can't do it. So I've been accused many times of being a jerk of all trades yeah. and going from one to one to trying to find some kind of thing that cuts through the time so I don't have to just get associated with one feel some feelings and then say well this is all there is when there could be much more than that is than the button is but I think it, it probably works out in the end anyway but 
but it, but sometimes is it just uh, what is it that makes a person find something bumbling around like that and and aware of that? Because obviously there are people who spend their lives with promises of certain religions, faiths, philosophies, promising certain things, and they said some of them say you've got to go through this the whole life till the very end, and you will know at death, and not till then if you follow this for for X many years. But regardless, you go through it or not. One thing is going to be very obvious. with the illusion that you are unimportant and incompetent and unnecessary to the environment in reference to being accepted by others who may seem to you ahead of you in their lifestyle and accomplishment might not actually be valid simply because they seem to be evolving faster than you. They may be heading for a harder fall and may not be able to cope when they hit that ground versus you who is taking so slow that when you do get to the level of competency, no matter how hard you fall, there is no breaking down. A lot of people are moving very fast in their own thinking. But when a real challenge comes along, they pick up too. Versus a lot of people who are moving very slow. Like the guy who won the marathon the last time. Everybody with top-notch runners, training over and over. And the day came when everybody was going to run that one, the stick is, he had to up and run leaving everybody wondering what the hell, where did he train from? Because you, the source of the route start with the first place. But the time came, everybody was so overtrained that they phased up early in the race. He being so dragged his foot type of training, ended up sticking it out and being the winner in the long run. He had more energy and endurance towards the end of the race and all the rest who were overtraining, banking on being with us. He was just banking on the fact that he was going to run the race. This is what we're trying to realize. That we place too much emphasis on a lot of things, but when nature presents it in our own time cycle, we don't realize that we have to flow it. When we do flow it, no problem. It works for beautiful. I suppose it works out anyway. I mean it's all it's all balanced. If I if I'm at the level of kindergarten, I'm going to get kindergarten teachings. If I'm a level of college, I'm going to get that. And so whichever I choose is the right thing for me at the right time anyway. Good. Then you're realizing, without doubt, environment is synchronous with input and storage of one's nature. And you can only synchronize your action to match it to survive. And that is timing. And you override timing by what you say to yourself. You can't override timing by nothing else. Probably not what you say to yourself. Well, outside of that timing, it will take precedent to keep you in line with your survival. You may not like it, but you will survive longer than those who are out of time. And when you can override timing by what you say to yourself, 
we're in a superior position because nothing is detrimental to you anymore. And there is no need to panic under any circumstances of immediate self-destruction or environmental destruction. You are master of the destiny, not your destiny. You are master of destiny. Though life may throw you into many fatal positions of no truth, and the destination is obvious that you have to go through it, you can either flounder and be destroyed by it, or master it. So, your friend, in his summation of his experience, the man of action is greater than the man of what? Thank you. Okay. See, that's why I said to you yesterday, who can take a bath in a blueprint tub? You got no way to validate it for a leak. Then you build it and find the cost of building it. Then you got what the tub really represents. Isn't the man of thinking and action better than just the man of action? That's why I said yes, no, maybe. See, most people only want the yes or the no. I have all three. Because all three is like this. Don't throw away your maps until you arrive where you're going. And after you arrive, don't throw away your maps. You may not want to stay there. So keep on going. But if you keep going, I don't need any map, no matter where you arrive, you just keep going. Mm -hmm. So in other words, so word, <laughs> it's a whole lot better to combine the qualities of belief, which is thinking or theorizing, the qualities of acting, which is confronting, into a random experience, utilizing insecurity as the only security to survive, and throw security out the door, and be the individual that can survive with insecurity as the only security. I try on insecurity. And other people thrive on security. You thrive on insecurity. It's living close to the edge. There is no other edge than the nostril. And that's where insecurity is always security. It never lets you down. The edge, hmm? what did you say? Your breath. Your nostril. Yeah, the nostril. Right. Your breath. If you don't live there, you don't have any place because there is where you came in. It doesn't make any difference if you have security if you can't breathe. And then you sound asleep if do you know if you're a man or a woman? When when you're asleep? When you're sound asleep, do you know if you're a man or a woman? Well, if you're sound asleep you're not even dreaming. And if you're Delta, you then yeah. No, you dream of Alpha, uh, Pepe, you don't dream of Delta. I thought the dream's Alpha. You dream of Alpha and Pepe. Not the Delta. Delta is deep trance, and the Delta is no dream. So, so there's no dreaming of Delta. Yeah, so the Delta so is not there, if, if you can stay in Delta... And be aware. And be aware, you will find out you need a man or a woman. But just to realize that you need a man or woman and can't get up or walk with it is no good either. Dead men are all in Delta, but they ain't got up and walk with it. Realized men are in Delta walking with it. And they know they need a man or a woman. That's defined in autobiography of a yogi too, with the Indian terms.
in regard to the state, which was the state of the person in the history. I think Nervicapa Samadhi versus what's the other one? Uh, Bilka. Yeah, Bilka. Yeah, Bilka. Yeah, Bilka. Yeah, functioning in Delta never tells you. If he did, then he's not in Delta. That is why the man Jesus made a statement, told that I eyes to see that they see and hear. I'm thinking of getting these tapes that uh, will enable you to enter and control the brainwaves of the theta state. Um, some of the advertising was versus with the Monroe Research Institute, which is research out of the body experiences, um, associates, well, what it says is that the years and years that are spent in versus doing yoga meditation uh, enables one to achieve a state of synchronization between the two great hemispheres. They say they can, uh, by inducing pulses, sonic pulses on these tapes, bring you um, immediately to the state do you think uh, that is the goal of, uh, to reach Samadhi, one has to synchronize both the three hemispheres? My friend, I build my opinion of machines. You know what? When I first came out, I was one of the builders of my opinion of machines. I've been mean, exposed to all kinds of research, by peer research, Dr. Shealy, the man who wrote the book, How Come Nelson Can Save Your Life, may not be kind of, that's not the only person in the world can lower the temperature below Delta. Everybody can raise the temperature very fast and go up, but they can't lower the lower Alpha. And that's what freaks out most of the researchers. How do I accomplish that I can lower my temperature below Delta? Do you do this consciously? Yeah, yeah. consciously. While in trance? Yeah. No, right there, yeah. hold it and go right down below Delta on the machine. And when they photograph me, to take x-rays for uh, being accepted for insurance, the upper portion of my lungs don't show up on the x-rays. <laughs> <laughs> That freaks him out too. And, uh, the doctor would not give me a, an okay for insurance uh, premiums. I had to go back. My ex-wife got so angry with me. She said, Adano, please stop playing tricks with the guys. There is no way you can do, but I have to have this for the sake of the company. <laughs> and so, Ginger was there when she got me. <laughs> so I went back. Uh, and the doctor said, oh man, not you again. I, you ruined my grief. I said, look, no, my wife. I said, okay, photograph, boom. Perfect body, perfect self. Come back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that was the funniest part, because he had the whole series of x-rays photograph me back front. And his uh, the girl that worked with me, the assistant, she couldn't explain how in the hell the top portion of lungs don't show up. Interesting, the top else around it was showing up. The boards will show up, but there's no actual. Interesting, the top because in most you know, meditation techniques and martial arts technique, they're always interested. It seems to be with the lower, and they say 
in stress you use the upper lungs and, and don't turn on the other ones as though three levels three on one side and two on the other so there must be some special significance then of the upper lungs obviously why is there three on the, is the, the right side and two on the left three of what three lobes yeah the lungs have a total of five which is a real interesting number again to appear you talking the lungs have how many lobes uh five five where are they located uh there's two on the on the side with the heart mm -hmm. and there's and there's three on the right side good now where is the actual biological heart located? Biological heart is right here, closer to the left side. And where is the electromagnetic heart located? Right, that's going to be on the right side then. So where did Jesus ascend when on he went right down into the so-called hell or the biological process? The right hand of God. Now where, what is God? The heart of the four elements in the electromagnetic fields. And how many nerve ends you have? A hundred and... No, 72,000 72, polar. Polarity, which is a hundred and forty-four thousand. That will be lifted up on the day of what? Glorification. People are waiting for somebody under the sky to pick them up off the ground and take them to Never Never Land when in actuality is the kinetic oscillation of the nerve ends in polarity turn upwards to the brain stem to fire off sonics as the saving process over atomic manifestation which is called Lama God in agricultural language, in physics of science, in the actual control of matter, the convex vision allows you to regulate it. Concave vision can't regulate it because you need equipment with your concave vision to look through. And even when you see it at the convex level, you may know not which button to press. If you don't know which button to press, you can fire off the wrong thing. You got four gases. Don't muck around with which one? Carbon dioxide. Good. Because it can construct or well it can destroy. And if you press the wrong reactor in it, you destroy a mechanism, you can't construct back with it. But if you know how to regulate it, you can phase out. So carbon dioxide is a shivite. Shivite. <laughs> it's a good old Sanskrit term. For what? They uh, may do the geometry and nice artwork. Shiver. Or Shiva meaning what? Shiver? Shiva is a destroyer. Right? Yes. I'm not going to destroy <laughs> That's a Sanskrit word representing what? Renovation. Yeah. Ren renovation yes. is one of the things. Uh, what Shivite is it? If they use the word Shiva to make the people. How about oscillation? To make the people relate to little games in their head because they're going to educate the masses to their own biological physics. You realize man know what he's talking about. So you use the word Shiva. And he makes all kinds of drawings to keep that group of people in their own fixations of entertainment. Now, if let's look at it objectively, scientists with the capacity of monitoring it and regulating it, what is a Shivite process now? Carbon dioxide is a Shivite process. It can construct and deactivate or break down. Carbon dioxide in the body is going to cool it down. Good. So therefore, one of its functions. Then it can also explode. Good. 
now we're getting back to more practical talk now. So what kinesis is involved in it? Dilation. Yeah, so they used to call it the yang or the yin in the Chinese uh, version of it. Yang? In the same way that ice would uh, expand? Yeah, but most people don't know that ice expands. Everybody believes like, uh, like ice constricts. Which in most cases, cold mm. makes things constrict. That's what they think. Hmm. But then you have to like, work with it and put it in a bottle and put it in a freezer and end up with a broken bottle for your stupidity <laughs> to believe that it does shrink. You pay the cost, especially if you got <laughs> expensive material to work with mm. in a lab. As an overweight people too. Yeah. No, we're not here to educate the people. That's their process of maturity at their own time. Right? So that means in cooling too fast, you can explode. Yes, sir. So dry ice is very what? Explosive? You know or well, it's cost. You, you can, strangely enough, you can burn yourself on it. It's a burning feeling if you, mm -hmm. if you grab it. It's very, it's, what's the term for it? not lasting too long. It's very, um, yeah, it's very volatile is the word. See, you're using words to describe physics and you don't even begin to see until you have to live with it to make the mistake. So in other words, when I'm in a place you're in another day, <laughs> I gotta be careful of that. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> he's been doing, since uh, recently, he's been doing a lot of shivering. And what is the release? Because he was always super, I mean, you couldn't, you could have this place. Well, the 20 Christian people had a group of people that uh, got <laughs> slain in the spirit, you know, slain oh. in the spirit. And they began to shake and what? Shiver. Shake and shiver, right? Hmm. Then the other group called themselves whirling dervish. Hmm. They, what are they whirling about? Hmm. To derive at what? Dervish. Let's see. Dervish. Well, all I know is that it, uh, it changes your optical orientation. But I don't know what temperature is, which, which you calmly... In other words, you can't... If you can't make a picture, because you can't close your eyes to see pictures for the brain to do, and you have to just watch spinning things, and yet you can't let your attention wander because your balance falls and you fall on your butt. So you've got to be there all the time, but you can't see a picture. So the optical orientation, this is how, you know, I experienced it. I'm sure there's other chemical things going on that, but that's, after a while, your orientation changes where you get into a uh, a different orient, either a disorientation process or whatever. Something something changes in you where you feel very unusual. And for the first 20 minutes of spinning, you feel very uh, annoyed, like what am I doing here? And then suddenly you get in a place like, wow, this is great, and you essentially live. You it's a way of it seems to be of getting in the now position, but what are you accomplishing going around in a circle? My friend, you spend a lot of time trying to explain to me how to make tomato paste liquid enough to pour through water. <laughs> okay. It's a stationary on the wall or the chest. Okay, what you're saying is that the carbon dioxide is being... Uh, Oxygen, or the oxygen is coming in to balance out the carbon dioxide in a process like that? If you have tomato paste stationary, how would you get it out of the bottle? You have to spoon it out. Hmm? Well, you can shake it a lot. Good. That's right. And what will happen? Well, okay, Your heat will be released through friction. That, that's just a guess at what it seems would be. Because motion is... I'm trying to poke a spoon in and are holding it there for hours. Yeah, if you shake it real hard, it comes out 
pretty quickly. Is that a, is that a, is that, I never thought about that. I thought. Bio ossification or oscillation is emulsification, which is synchronicity to the mass in terms of normalcy, pH factor 7. You put a, you put a straw in that, in that uh, tomato paste. You put air in the bottom and you just give it a little whack. We're going to put out. the air in the bottom. It's a closed bottle with stagnant material. How do you get oh, it to pour With a straw. Okay. Oh, no, oh, it's a closed bottle. Oh, it's a closed bottle, okay. So you can't do that. Therefore, oscillating it will do what? Is the bottle really filled to the top? No. What is it to the top? Is there air space? Airspace. Now, if you turn the thing upside down, what do you get? The airspace. Regardless of sitting there long enough, what happened to the airspace? The airspace is going to go to the bottom now. Good. Then, by virtue of oscillation, the whirling dervish arrived at a simple way to generate what? Biological what? Emulsification of his what? Lymphatic system. Which is what? Lumpy like hell by what? This carbonation from the fear of sitting in one spot or worrying about somebody going to beat the ass out of it. But when you shiver, isn't that the lymphatic moving really fast? Good. Then shake, shiver, and roll. So then that's good, the shivering. Who said it was not? I didn't say it was not. I said, what are you trying to accomplish? pH factor 7. The sperm does it, right? Yeah. <laughs> what is pH factor 7? Neutrality. Neutrality. Good. Then so you, can, you can do what now for the first time with your body. You didn't arrive at any internal fixated picture, you know. You arrive at an internal what? Like a lymphatic flow. Yes, yeah, like a balance thing internally, of a pneumatic balance actually, because well, there are no pictures. Therefore, you were back exactly as when you came out of the womb. Only you were in a mature body looking down to the process of what? simplicity by virtue of oscillation now with the feeling generated in that Ad Adano is that more authentic than sitting down and seeing a bunch of pretty pictures when yes you, okay that's because there are no pictures in it but there's a no, feeling the feeling is what constriction what? dilation or elation elation no appears. elation is it a constricting state or a dilated state Elation, I would say, is definitely a dilation. And this is what fluidic flexibility is in muscle, nerve, and lymphatics. Respiratory action is on time for the first time. Transport of blood through this room. Nerves and muscles and veins and arteries are going on for the first time. Material is being transported that detoxifies itself. So, immediately after, what was the urge to do? In the shivering? Mm -hmm. The piss or not the piss? <laughs> oh, oh by God. Oh I can tell God. you about that. Oh by God. Oh my God. Oh by God. Let me go to the bathroom. I don't want to start to take off my panties. That's a Come on, you guys are, you amazing, you really good. <laughs> God is very, very mundane, you know, and very sacred. <laughs> the sacredness of God is that we can't take away his job of making a creation. We have to surmise and be satisfied to be a creation and him be the creator. But the beautifulness is the fact that principle is embodied or in resident in this organism as sonics, the ability to talk to oneself. And by virtue of this embodiment and privilege, the atoms must obey me if I act what I say. 
It is that simple and that powerful and that dynamic. But if I don't, then I must pay the consequences by virtue of denial and lack of understanding. And to be out of time is very obvious after a while because you're going to goof up. It's being goofy not being out of time, Donald. This is a real cosmic question. How can I better time my stock market investments? <laughs> I've had seven bad trades in a row. <laughs> what advice do you have? <laughs> well, so sorry. that I can start winning at the options game. <laughs> I'm going to answer you like a certain brother of mine told another friend. Your auto life I have no control of. No matter you may seem to love me from within your heart. If ever you need to find central focus within your brain, close your eyes and see me, if you can. And then discover what I can do for you at that point, in terms of timing. But as far as the external manifestation through your open eyes, I can't alter that for you. In other words, I can't eat for you. But I can help you to help yourself to know how to focus with it to eat correctly. And that's why we can't really alter people's alter lives and give them comfort because it ends up what? Blowing away, working or not working, and then if you get carried away. Well, he told me this, and when I said, if I listened to my own mind, I should have done this. This is what happened. <laughs> I asked the same situation many years ago, and I was thrown right back into that point. That outer life is your own responsibility to make your mistakes and learn from it. Inner life is the relationship of those who can trigger a sense of unity with your nature. That is a different kind of relationship. So, at the time you're in doubt as to where you are, goes in, out of sight is not out of mind, you're there. Because you're breathing in my carbon dioxide and calling it oxygen. And I'm breathing in your carbon dioxide and calling it oxygen. The equal exchange is for an internal relationship. It's not for an external control to teach you what to do, because we can't. We're respiratory organisms. But the nature of failing and correcting by the trial and error is individualistic. My own feelings and frustration is individualistic for me. Our exchange of the gas and compassionate nature is universally collected for everybody. So we have what is called an aspect of unity and an aspect of individuality. Suffer to be so that's the way it comes. You can with the other person with individual options. But we can exchange our connectedness and aid each other in the connectedness level to hold truth to the point of inward balance. So that's what the teachers have done for me all through the years. I have to regulate my outer life and live it, no matter how mucky or ridiculous it may seem, but I gotta go through it. But as far as my internal integrity goes, I can rely on the gurus and how the holy ones there line up like links in a big chain. Mm. All I'm doing, my head is hooked into the, the chain of reality, like another link. It ain't going any place. So whatever I do, I'm the fish and the bait being pulled up. Internally, it's there. That doesn't break away. Externally, you have this to live and do and so the next one. To give us a sense of appreciation that we can make mistakes, we can overdo, take all kind of gambles from because why? It's there for us to express it. And since we can't own it, we can only use it. The joy is going through it. So if you think you're losing now and making bad decisions, Wait till you're making good decisions, you're going to do what? Freak out and go and show off? 
be more humble. <laughs> <laughs> well, we say we go, we say we go be humble. It's when the time comes we we, we don't realize how, how bombastic we can be. I can do no wrong. I can make good bets. I got it made. Right, do 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 do. And got it. It's him, that's been how it comes to love. I've been on that road. See, when I won $100 I met on a slot machine, I must have talked about it for two months. Imagine if I won 500000 Nobody had well, talked to me. I have a friend who won the Oh, yes, <laughs> everybody <laughs> won the <laughs> 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 What number did you use? <laughs> right. Yeah, that's yeah. possible. <laughs> yeah. Better to lose in the beginning, because then when you start to win, you know you're not a genius. But if you win yeah. in the beginning... <laughs> And it's Years ago, I went to Las Vegas and I made a pledge to myself. I said, I don't want to win any money to carry the don't belong to me. But I would like to come here and win back every penny that I spend for the time I stay here. In the hotels, going around and enjoying the values and appreciations of Las Vegas. I don't want a penny over a penny less. I want to play all the machines and whatever <coughs> Not what I spent, I want to win it back so that my trip to Las Vegas is a cost free experience. I've been four times to Vegas, and all four times I came out for a year. The first time I spent $400 to be there in hotels and everything, played the slot machines, and I won back the $400, got in the car, and drove away. Second time I went there, I won 350 bucks in the cards. That's what I spent to the hotels and everything was three hundred fifty dollars. My bill was like that. And there I got back my treatment. And as I said four times I and Henry Carn, when I told him that, he said, Oh boy, he went and had the same experience. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he spent he got back and no more. He said from then on he's cured of Las Vegas. You don't need to go to Las Vegas. Because he didn't get any more, he didn't get any less. He got that. Like, he played what he liked to play. For the length of time he played from the hotel either. And he got back exactly to go back home. I mean, that's what the best way to go to Las Vegas. With your needs rather than your desires. Or go to play so it doesn't cost you anything to be there. Well, how about if I if I want to win back all that I've lost? <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, that could be quite a bit. <laughs> Can I win back all that? <laughs> <laughs> you see, you know, the point is this: that you're not spending anything. So to win back what you lost is not valid. You want to win what you spend. So I have to have um, I have to get myself way in debt. <laughs> In other words, like you can't. You can only drive one car at a time or wear one pair of shoes at a time, so you, your needs are being taken care of at that time right there, but... And then the next town you go to, you are <laughs> expected to work there too. You don't have the, you don't have the you savings see, account. What it cost me to go there by car and be with friends and everything, that cost, I want to get it back. In other words, the trip there is for entertaining not the game. Oh. It, it, it works. Well, it was very interesting to see it work on four occasions exactly. Well, what if I said something like, you know, because I don't like my current vocation, I said, I will now be supported by the stock market and I'll quit all my jobs. Do <laughs> you think it would come, come to the, the board and support my, my needs? Well, listen <laughs> to what you said, you see. Are you willing to spend what it costs to be supported by the stock market? <laughs> because you can't get something for nothing. You have to have a seat to uh, as a trade. <laughs> you got to you give out as an investing to get back as a return of the investing. So. There's a better realization to what you need is to state and be clear in your own consciousness. I'm willing to pay my bills and I have three choices to pay them. Pass the time with the most agony because they're doomed right then again. On time with none left over by the skin of the nose 
and therefore you have a month to go again to build up, to be on time. Or, <laughs> two percent off in ten days, which is ahead of time, and some to spare, and some to share. Now, it's difficult for people to grasp the third situation, to pay their bills ahead of time with some to spare and some to share. Because they feel what? If you pay your bills ahead of time with some to spare and some to share, what would you feel? Knowing that you're using credit to your advantage. feeling that you would lose that by losing that edge you would be back in the other one of the other situations that's insecurity is the only security now yeah. if you can live there paying your bills ahead of time and some to spare and some to share would you worry what the side of the bill is mm -hmm. <coughs> no we you would be on your but the, how will you live beyond your means? Well, if you had some to, some to spare beyond it. Paying all your bills ahead of time with some to spare and some to share. Is that why when you start getting a little bit ahead, you, you rent an extra apartment and keep it empty just to keep it going? <laughs> yeah, it's about, at one time he had five apartments and there was only two being used. These three vacant apartments are just sitting around as storerooms, but you know, there'd be just a few boxes in there and they can take for months and go on. <laughs> you create more bills to create. <laughs> That's what he does in those places. For, and he says this is where people can stay and maybe one person come for a week there and every two months and stay in that place, you know. Jesus said, the things I do, we shall do also, and greater things shall you do. If he said, I'm not greater than me, what would do 